Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for uh, holding this hearing tonight and also shining a light on uh, veteran suicide. Uh, tonight's topic is the most important, most confounding, and the most heartbreaking one that we will discuss in this committee. While suicide is a tragedy, no matter where it happens, it is particularly painful when it occurs on the grounds of a Department of Veterans Affairs medical facility with help mere feet away. The last several weeks have seen four incidents of suicide on VA campuses, including one uh, just today in Cleveland. Uh, my heart goes out to the surviving family members and friends of each of these veterans, and I want them to know that they are foremost on our minds here uh, in this Congress. Their loved ones are a part of approximately 20 of our nation's veterans, active duty service members, and members of the National Guard and Reserve who die by suicide each day. That rate has remained largely the same since the 1990s, despite two decades of sincere effort from administrations on both sides of the political spectrum and substantial increases in funding, staffing programs, attention and support for mental health care and suicide prevention inside and outside of the VA health care system. Since 2005 alone, funding for the VA mental health care has increased 258% to a high of $9.4 billion in the most recent request. Unquestionably, too little progress has been made. Uh, unquestionably, a business-as-usual approach to this crisis is not sufficient. To be clear, the tragedy of suicide is a societal one that is in no way unique to VA or to veterans. Let me just give you an anecdotal uh, description of why I know that's true. In my state of Tennessee, when I graduated from medical school, we had Eastern State, Central State, and Western State Mental Hospital. Those are all gone. Um, as I went across my district and held town halls and round tables this past two weeks, I met an EMT um, who told me that he worked in the ER on weekends. Uh, one weekend, he had a man there who was in a room waiting for a bed in a mental hospital. He came back a week later and the man was still in the emergency room. For seniors, we have to transport people from Sullivan County, Tennessee, you don't know where that is, but to Memphis, and I can tell you it's 500 miles away. We, have, we do not have the mental health infrastructure, not just for VA, but for our citizens in this country anymore, and it's something we're gonna have to, to learn to deal with as a nation. Of the 20 suicide deaths per day among our nation's heroes, 14 have not received, as the chairman said, VA health care in the two years preceding their deaths. This is a clear indication that VA alone cannot solve this crisis. I commend President Trump for issuing two executive orders in the last two years to rally federal, state, and local government agencies as well as non-governmental organizations around this issue. I look forward to the hearing today about how those executive orders are working and how their impact will be measured moving forward. I'm also looking forward to delivering in, uh, de delving into an important concept that Sec Secretary Wilk and his team, including Dr. Stone and Dr. Franklin, who are with, both with us tonight, have been stressing recently, and that is the suicide is not exclusively a matter of mental health. It's quite a bit more complex than that, and solving it will require nothing less than harnessing the collective efforts of every community around in need long before the crisis point is reached. Tonight's hearing would be incomplete if it didn't include a frank discussion about the role each one of us can play in our districts to stem the tragic tide of veteran suicide and about the deeper personal and societal issues such as loss of purpose, belonging, and connection that far too many Americans, not to mention veterans, are struggling with. Our goal should be more than just preventing suicide. It should be helping our veterans to live a life of meaning and joy. I would like to also uh, caution us all in having that discussion to resist narratives that paint veterans as victims or a tragedy of suicide is insurmountable. We know from research and experience that uh, treatment works and recovery is possible and that is the principal message that I hope everyone takes home tonight with them. I'm grateful uh, for all of our witnesses and audience members for being here this evening, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman.